Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation, Treasury Bond or T-Bond. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information comes from Investopedia Treasury Bond T-Bond, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by James Chen, updated April 2nd, 2022. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at investment goals, investment strategies, investment tools, keeping them in mind. We're now asking, what is a treasury bond or T-bond? Treasury bond, T-bond are government debt securities issued by the U.S. United States federal government that have maturities greater than 20 years. So they're a type of bond, which we can think of as a kind of note. We can think of it as similar to us loaning money, say, to the issuer of the note, that being uh, the U.S. government. They are long term because they're greater than the 20 years. So just a quick breakdown note that we can imagine here we're loaning in essence money to the government in exchange for a promissory note to pay it back in the future plus most likely some kind of interest so we've got a maturity date we've got the face amount of the note that we're going to be having how much they're going to be giving us back at the maturity time and then typically we're going to have what's equivalent to kind of rent on the loan that we made in exa for example if we were to rent an apartment then typically we would have the apartment coming back to us or our original investment that we loaned. And then we would also have the rent on it, the rent being equivalent in essence to interest here. So T bonds earn periodic interest until maturity. So maturity is the ending period at which point in essence you can think of you get the face about or kind of like the return of in essence the property in essence. So at which point the owner is also paid a par, a par amount equal to the principal. Treasury bonds are part of the larger category of US sovereign debt known collectively as treasuries, which are typically regarded as virtually risk-free since they are backed by the US government, the United States government ability to tax its citizens. So obviously, when you have these kind of investments they're typically going to be more secure types of investments and that means there's generally going to be less flexibility so when you were thinking about bonds for example versus say stocks we would think that the bonds could be uh more secure if the person that uh, you're you're loaning the money to and buying the bond from uh is secure and you would think that the u.s government would be as secure as you can get because they have the ability to tax, they have the ability in essence to print money. If they didn't uh, service their bond obligations, that would be very bad for the economy. So you would think that the risk there quite low. So understanding treasury bond T bonds, treasury bonds T bonds are one of the four types of debt issued by the US Department of Treasury to finance the US government's spending activities. So obviously if you're, if they're issuing, you're buying the bond directly from the government, you are in essence kind of loaning the government money and the government could then of course use that money however the government feels that they should be using the money funding the government activities so they'll kind of put it in the fire and burn it and just for the fun of it and see what you know see what happens see how, see how big the bonfire they could get with that now they'll they'll use it for very efficiently and well so the four types of debt uh, are treasury bills, treasury notes, treasury bonds, treasury inflation protected securities or TIPS. These securities vary by maturity and coupon payments. So we've talked a bit about these individually. And so they have some differences in terms of maturity dates, how long they're going to be extending. We're now looking at the longer ones, which are going to be the the T bonds and uh, the coupon payments. So all of them are considered benchmarks to their comparable fixed income categories because they are virtually risk free. So oftentimes when we think about other categories of say related kind of investments like corporate bonds and those kind of things, we might try to use the treasury bonds as the benchmark because the idea would be that the treasury bonds don't have the same kind of levels of risk related to them. So you can kind of use it as a baseline to be comparing similar other types of uh, securities. So T bonds are backed by US government, the United States government and the US United States government can raise taxes and increase revenue to ensure full payments. So when they increase revenue, obviously revenue to the government is taking the money, right? Taking the money from people through the taxation. So if they could pay with the power of taxation, you would think that they would be fairly secure to pay off their debts. Uh, if they needed to just raise, this, raise the taxes. So these instruments are also considered benchmarks to their respective fixed income categories because they offer a base risk-free rate of investment with the category's lowest return. So clearly you're, you're generally gonna have the lowest return with the T-bonds 
because if something is in essence risk free, then uh, that, that means that the government can issue them at uh, a lower lower returns, being paying lower basically rent or interest on it because of that low risk. And that's one of the benefits, of course, if, if you have confidence, if people have trust, then typically uh, you, you're, peop that's valuable, clearly. So that's a valuable thing. So T-bonds have long durations uh, issued with maturities of 20 to 30 years. So long term, as is true for other government bonds, T-bonds make interest payments semi-annually and the income received is only taxed at the federal level. So treasury bonds are issued at monthly online auctions held directly by the U.S. Treasury. A bond's price and its yield are determined during the auction. So you've got the same kind of auction kind of situation that helped determine on a market basis basically what the price should be. So after that, T-bonds are traded actively on the secondary market and can be purchased through a bank or broker. So these are more long-term bonds. So clearly you would expect that they would also have kind of that secondary market. The primary market would mean that we bought the bonds from the issuer of the bonds, that in this case being the government. If you bought the bonds from the government, you're giving the money directly to the government in exchange for the bonds, basically the notes and so on. But then people can buy and sell these bonds on the secondary market. And that means that you're buying or selling from another investor, not working with the issuer directly at that point. So individual investors often use T-bonds to keep a portion of their investment savings risk-free to provide a steady income in retirement. So the fact that they have that basically return gives you some income, the income is fairly low, but the fact that it's gonna be, in essence, they're saying risk-free, right, would give you a more security, even if there's gonna be fluctuation in the economy. So uh, to set aside savings for child education or other major expenses, so when you're saving for education or something like that and your time horizon is not as long, then you might put more of your investments in treasury bonds because you don't want to you don't want it to, to drop like right before the end date when you need the money, for example. So investors must hold their T bonds for a minimum of 45 days before they can be sold on the secondary market. It's treasury bond maturity ranges. Treasury bonds are issued with maturities. That's the ending term. Uh, that can range from 20 to 30 years. So the end of the bond is, you know, the end of the, the when they're gonna mature, right? You're loaning the money in essence, kind of. And then at the end, you've got that maturity time frame. So when they, when they pay off the face amount and so on. So they are issued with a minimum denomination of $100 and a coupon payments on the bonds are paid semi-annually. So if you rent something like property, for example, uh, then you usually pay the rent monthly. With the bonds, you're talking uh, semi-annually every six months in essence, that the interest, which is kind of like similar to the rent on what has been borrowed, in this case, not property, but money, therefore not rent, but interest. The bonds are initially sold through an auction. The maximum purchase amount is $5 million. If the bid is non-competitive or 35% of the offering, if the bid is competitive, a competitive bid states the rate the bidder is willing to accept. It, uh, it is accepted depending on how it compares with the bond set rate of the bond. So the non-competitive bid ensures the bidder gets the bond, but they have to accept the set rate. So if you're doing the competitive bid, you can try to you know do a market kind of negotiation type of thing, more or less to help set the price. The non-competitive bid, you're accepting the price that basically has been that kind of like the, generally they will take the average of the competitive bids and that will then be the price they'll use for the non-competitive bids after the auction the bonds can be sold in the secondary market so the treasury bonds secondary market there is an active secondary market for t bonds making the investment highly liquid so the fact that you're locked in to this 20-year thing you might say well then i don't have a lot of liquidity with it but because these are these are in essence risk-free kind of investments you may you can of course you know fairly readily sell them on the secondary market, although of course, what you can sell them for may vary given the market conditions. So the secondary market also makes the price of T-bonds fluctuate considerably in the trading market. So obviously when you think about the bond, remember you, what, the, what you have on a bond typically is a maturity date, which might be fairly far into the future with the long-term bonds. You've got the interest, so how much they're gonna be paying on a semi-annual ba basis with the interest and the face amount and you know what you expect to get at the end or the maturity basically of uh, the bond 
So given that you can't really adjust the interest rates as interest rates adjust in the market because those have been fixed once the bond has been issued, what you can adjust is the bond price, what you sell, the, you know, what you sell the bond for at a premium or a discount. So they're still, you know, you can you could sell them on the secondary market, but you're not going to change the interest rate to do so, but you're going to change instead the sales price. So similar to other types of bonds, T bonds on the secondary market, uh, C prices go down when when auction rates increase because the value of the bond's future cash flow is discounted at the higher rate. Inversely, when prices decrease. Uh, auction rate yields decrease. Treasury bond yields in the fixed income market, T bond yields help to form the yield curve, which includes the full range of investments offered by the US government. The yield curve diagram yield by maturity and is often uh, upward sloping with lower maturities, maturities offering lower rates than longer dated maturities. However, the yield curve can become inverted when long-term rates are lower than short-term rates and inverted yield curve can signal an incoming recession. So when you're trying to kind of predict what's the what's going to happen in the economy, oftentimes you'll hear a lot about the yield curve and the inversion of the yield curve being a, you know, a danger danger zone. You're in the danger zone.